Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm just gonna be talking about my October TBR, which has a lot to do with the readathons that I'm joining, which I will have that video up and linked either in the cards or down below or something. Otherwise it is on my channel. Um, so my TBR for October is for the two readathons I'm doing, which I'm doing Gothtober, which is the whole month. And then I'm doing Vampathon, which is the last week of October. Um, so the 25th to the 31st. So I have quite a few books on my TBR. We'll see if I get through them. I'm not gonna like hold myself to it. Like if it's just too much or you know, the month slips away or whatever. Um, I do wanna get through a good amount and I am happy with my TBR, but um, I also have school. So I have to, you know, be in reality in that I may not be able to read all of these. I do have a couple mangas, so that'll help. Um, um, but yeah, anyways, let's just get into it. So, the first book I have on my TBR, and all of these, I will start by saying all of these, except for one, is on my Kindle, which kind of sucks, but it's what it is because I'm limited on how many books I can bring. So, um, anyways, yeah, so I'll have to put like the covers up and stuff. So anyways, first book on my TBR is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Um, and that one is about, the only good Indians is about a tale of revenge, cultural identity, and the cost of breaking from tradition in this latest novel, um, like I said, by Stephen Graham Jones. Um, it follows four American Indian men after a disturbing event from their youth puts them in a desperate struggle for their lives. Tracked by an entity bent on revenge, these childhood friends are held are helpless as the culture and traditions they left behind catch up to them in a violent, vengeful way. So it does say it's fiction, horror, dark, mysterious, reflective. Um, let me see. There's some content, content warning, so do look those up just in case. I do think it's supposed to be pretty spooky, so we'll see. Um, I do have this under my Gothtober for murder. I put it in Omens, I'm not sure if it'll fit, but I'm, we'll see. I also put it in uh, by POC rep because Stephen Graham Jones is um, Native American. And then also under Mythology for Gothtober, and then I think I have it for Vampathon as well under A Book That Frightens You. So, because I think it's supposed to be pretty spooky. So I have that one, and then my next one is kind of lumped with three because um, I have dark romance as one of the prompts for Gothtober and so I put a few on there just to have some options as well. Um, so I have Bound by Honor by Cora Riley I believe? Yeah, Cora Riley. Um, that one's supposed to be like mafia romance so I'm not sure if it would be considered dark romance but you know, Mafia is kind of dark, so <laughs> I thought it would fit under there. Um, let me see, that is the first book in Born in Blood Mafia Chronicles. It is about a girl born into one of the leading mob families in Chicago. She's a Mafia princess known for her beauty. Um, she will be forced to marry um, Luca the Tio, I think is how you say his name, which is, he's part of the New York Mafia, I believe, to kind of bring everyone together. He's known for his brutality and for crushing his cousin's throat in his bare hands. So it does sound dark, <laughs> um, but it's just kind of supposed to be about how she's very reluctant in marrying him, believes she's marrying a monster, um, and then obviously turns to romance. So yeah, we'll see if I get to that one. That fits under dark romance. I don't think it fits under any other categories, no. Um, the other one I have for that category is A Lady of Rook's Grave Manor by Catherine Moon. Um, this one I do think would fit under dark romance more because it is supposed to be kind of monster romance. Um, and it also, I also put it under classics because I believe there's some vampire reference which I thought like Dracula which is a classic 
I don't know. I'm just trying to make it fit a little bit, but um, yeah. So I have that one. That one is about, it is the first book in the Tempting Monsters series. <clears throat> it does say it's lighthearted and fast paced, but I do think there is some um, like sexual content. So be aware of that if you're not into that for your romance. Um, it says, on the brink of losing her position as a maid for the Pickering family and with no prospects to go on, the offer of a place at Rooksgrave Manor, a house of ill and unusual repute, sounds like a perfect fit for a young woman with Esther's inclinations. Even better, the invitation comes from the hand of the handsome Dr. Underwood, a delicate gentleman with a ferocious alter ego who knows exactly what he wants from Esther. Arriving at the manor, Esther's never felt so sure of being in the right place in her entire life, but waiting to meet the men who will claim her is agonizing, especially with the stone butler booker so conveniently at hand. Let's see. So yeah, I think it's supposed to be pretty quick and just dark romance, monster romance. You know, thought it would be good for um, October. The next one that I have under that category, so dark romance, is Her Soul to Take, Her Soul to Take by Harley LaRue. I'm not sure if I said her last name right. Um, that one is about, I think it might have multiple points of views. I think this one's supposed to be pretty dark, like one of the darkest romance that I've heard of. Um, definitely look at the trigger warnings, content warnings of what's involved. It's fiction, erotica, fantasy, romance. Um, it is supposed to be pretty dark. Like it even has a content warning in the about of the book. So um, just be aware of that. I'm a little hesitant reading it, but I was intrigued and thought I might give it a try. I'm not sure if I like dark romance, so we'll see what happens when I try to read some of these books. Um, the description, it looks like it's got a couple point of view. So there's Leon who says, I earned my reputation among magicians for a reason. One wrong move and you are dead. Killer, they called me and killing is what I'm best at, except her. The one I was supposed to take, the one I should have killed. I didn't. The cult that once controlled me wants her and I'm not about to lose my new toy to them. And then shows another point of view, Ray, I've always believed in the supernatural. Hunting for ghosts is my passion, but summoning a demon was never part of the plan. Monsters are roaming the woods and something ancient, something evil is waking up and calling my name. I don't know who I can trust or how deep this darkness goes. All I know is my one shot at survival is the demon stalking me and he doesn't just want my body, he wants my soul. So we'll see, I am intrigued, but I, I will just DNF it if I'm feeling uncomfortable with it, so. We'll see how that one goes. But like I said, that fits under dark romance in Gothtober. Um, I don't think I put it under any others. No. Okay. The next book I have on my TBR is The Truth About Keeping Secrets by Savannah Brown. This one has been on my list for quite a while. And I believe it's pretty short. So I thought that would be a good one to add. Um... I have it under the LGBTQ plus prompt and then I also have it under found family. I'm not exactly sure if it'll be like a found family thing, but I, I know she like befriends someone after her dad passes away, I believe. Yeah. Um, and uh, befriends someone at school, so I just thought found family a little bit. But this one is about... It says, Sydney's dad is the only psychiatrist for miles around their small Ohio town. He is also unexpectedly dead. Is Sydney crazy or is it kind of weird that her dad, a guy whose entire job revolved around other people's secret crash, secrets crashed alone with no explanation? And why is June Copeland, homecoming queen and the town's golden child at his funeral? As the two girls grow closer in the wake of the accident, it's clear that not everyone is happy about their new friendship. But what is picture perfect June still hiding and does Sydney even want to know? So yeah, I think it should be good. It's supposed to be a thriller to some content warnings, so definitely look those up. 
I recommend Storygraph if you want to look up content warnings because I feel like they're more accessible than they are on Goodreads. So that's been super helpful for me. <coughs> um, but yeah, I think that's it. I don't think I have it under anything else. <coughs> nope. Um, my next book that I have is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Um, <coughs> that one I also have under the murder prompt for um, Gothtober. <coughs> and then I have it under, let's see, I think another prompt. I have it under Vampathon, but I can't remember for what prompt. I was going to just try to fill out the bingo board because that's fun, even though you're just supposed to get a bingo. Um, but anyways, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This has also been on my list for a while and on my Kindle for a while. <clears throat> so I just want to get to it. I've heard good things about it. Let me see. So... This one is about, it says, the case is closed. Five years ago, schoolgirl Addie Bell was murdered by Saul Singh. Singh, I think that's how you say it. The police know he did it. Everyone in town knows he did it. But having grown up in the same small town that was consumed by the murder, Pippa Fitzamobi isn't so sure when she chooses the case as the topic for her final year project. She starts to uncover secrets that someone in town desperately wants to stay hidden. And if the real killer is still out there, how, how far will they go to keep Pip from the truth? So it's a YA crime thriller um, and it's supposed to be pretty page tur turning. So um, I totally thought this had like blood on the cover, which I think is the prompt I had it under for, or the bingo board prompt for Vampathon. Um, and it doesn't, it was red strings. <laughs> But I put it there anyways, and I have it on my TBR for a Vampathon, so it should be fun. Um, the next book I have is A Sign of Affection, Volume 1, and I have this under the disability rep prompt because I believe the main character girl is deaf. Um, I also wanted to add manga because manga is quick. I love it. It's super easy for me to read, and it just makes me so happy, so... Um, I wanted to fit it under there. So this one says it's about Yuki, a typical college student whose world revolves around her friends, social media, and the latest sales. But when a chance encounter on a train leads her to meet to her meeting friend of a friend and fellow student, her world starts to widen. Um... I, yeah, I believe the main character, the girl, is deaf, and the guy she meets can speak three languages, but sign language isn't one, um, and they're just hoping to, like, learn how to communicate with each other. So I did it for disability rep, because in the book, she's deaf, so, um, wanted to add that one, and it's also been on my Kindle for a couple months now, so... Yeah, I wanted to add that one. The next book I have is actually a physical book, and I have The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Um, I've had this one for a while, and it was on my TBR for my break, but it's paperback, so I didn't get to it because I was trying to do all my hardbacks first. Um, but this one I can fit under a couple of prompts. So I believe I can fit it under Murder. I can fit it under I Believe Found Family probably classics, LGBTQ plus rep, um, probably mythology for the Gothtober, and then for Vampathon, I can fit it under set in a school, um, what else, thriller, murder mystery, it's not really a gothic cover, but kind of, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, have this one and this one is about um under the influence of their charismatic classics professor a group a group of clever eccentric misfits at an elite new england college discover a way of thinking and living that is a world away from the humdrum existence of their contemporaries but when they go beyond the boundaries of normal mortality their lives are changed profoundly and forever 
so definitely just literary fiction mysterious um i'm very excited to read this i also love this cover for how simple it is but also like the foil of the title and, and the author i don't know why this is just one of my favorite covers but anyways that is the only physical book that i have and I'm very excited to get to it. I've been wanting to pick it up for a few days now. And I'm just like, you know, I'm gonna see if I can fit it into any of these prompts and read it because, you know, like right time, right book. I was really feeling this is the right time for me to pick it up. It's a pretty long book, but I'm not scared of that whatsoever. I can usually get through those pretty quickly. The next book that I have is Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. And this one I have fit under Vampathon prompts because I put it under I put it under Vampire Book to Movie because there is a movie so I wanted to watch that. And then I have it under Supernatural main character. I can't remember if the main character is supernatural or if just other characters are, but you know, I thought it would fit it anyways. Um, it is about St. Vladimir's Academy isn't just a boarding school. It's a hidden place where vampires are educated in the ways of magic and have human teens trained to protect them. Rose Hathaway is a peer, a bodyguard for her best friend Lisa a Maori vampire princess. They've been on the run, but now they're being dragged back to St. Vladimir's, the very place where they're most in danger. So I've heard this is pretty good. Um, pretty like, like YA started the whole vampire like movement of, because <laughs> that was pretty much all I read in like seventh and eighth grade was vampire books, vampire romance books, thank you Twilight. I've actually never read Vampire Academy. Um, the other one I read was Mart, I think, and some of those books. And there were some others, but that just era of my supernatural love <laughs> YA books, like that's what started everything. But anyways, I'm excited to get to Vampire Academy since I haven't read it and it should be pretty good. The next book on my TBR is Bunny by Mona Awad. I think a lot of people have probably heard about this. This I have for Vampathon because um, it's set in a school, but it's also Chloe's Patreon buddy read, which she's from Books with Chloe um, on YouTube, and then I believe that's her Instagram as well. Um, but yeah, I've also had this on my list for a while. I was a little hesitant getting to it because I think there's some animal cruelty and I'm just not sure how I would do reading that. But I do want to give it a try. I think it's supposed to be pretty funny, but also kind of spooky at the same time. This one, the description says, it says getting into the MFA program at Warren University was supposed to transform her life, but Samantha hates it there. She hates the sinister slant of the golden afternoon light. She hates her dingy apartment and the flasher who hangs around outside. She hates the rumors of random beheadings in the downtown area, but she hates the bunnies most of all. Privileged, vapid, and unbearably perky, the only other members of her fiction writing class have formed a parasitic girl gang. Um says then she's invited to join and dabble in the dark arts with them. I believe she's invited to one of their parties and it just kind of kicks off from there. So I am excited to get to this and very excited to read my first Mona Awad book because I'm also interested in her other book all as well. When I'll get to that, I don't know, but um, I'm very excited to read Bunny and I'm glad it's the book for Chloe's Patreon buddy read. So yeah. The last book I have on my TBR is another manga and it's called Ajin and it's volume one. Um, this one I have on here for Vampathon as well. 
um, to fit, I think, a spooky manga. So I think it's supposed to be pretty spooky. This is part of the Demi-Human series. <clears throat> um, so this one says, high school student Key is struck dead in a grisly traffic traffic accident, but immediately revives to learn that he may not be like every other human. Instead, he may be a mysterious, almost immortal, being granted not only the powers of rejuvenation, but the abilities to see supernatural beings. Scared, he runs away and is aided in his escape from society by his friend. Unfortunately for Key, the manhunt is on, and he will soon be caught within a conflict between mankind and others like him as they prepare to fight a new war based on terror. So, again, just kind of spooky manga. I have a physical copy, but I left it home, so I got it on Kindle Unlimited. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to read it on there for Vampathon. And that sums up everything for my October TBR. It is quite long, like I said, so I'm not going to hold myself to it. A few books, like I said, were in some of the same prompt, so I just figured I'd choose whatever sounds best at the time for the prompt and go on from there. If I want to read the other ones, then I will. Otherwise, I'll just choose one and then move on to the next prompt. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's it for my TBR. Let me know if you've read any of these books, what you think, if you haven't, what you're going to read for October. If you are joining readathons or have anything spooky, give me recommendations. I love October fall books. I love dark academia books, so that's why I'm super excited for the secret history. Um, but anyways, yeah, just let me know what you're reading for October, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button down below, and I will talk to you later. Bye!